So before we begin our scripture reading this morning, I just want to let everyone out there who may be viewing online know that we do have food available from this past Friday's food handout. So uh, if you are in need or know someone that is in need, please feel free to contact us either uh, on the Facebook page. Um, you can call the Parsonage or you can email me um, at elight at susumc.org. Uh, and we'll set up a time to get it, uh, something delivered for them or for you to come in and pick it up. <clears throat> Our scripture this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opening and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came out of the heavens, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. Immediately the Spirit impelled him to go out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the word of God for the people of God. So as we look at our scripture lesson for today, we find Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist. And as he emerges from the waters, God calls down to him saying, This is my son whom I love and I am well pleased with. Jesus then moves off into the wilderness for the next 40 days to be tempted by Satan and to live among the wild beasts and to be attended to by angels. And finally, in our verses today, we see Jesus coming out of the wilderness and beginning his public ministry. These verses from the gospel are suggested by the liturgical calendar because this, in case you don't know, is the first Sunday in Lent. And just like Jesus, we are now entering into our 40-day journey from Ash Wednesday to Easter. And these few verses in Mark are full of so much significance for us. There are many lessons that we can take away from them in just these few around 140 or some odd words. The first is thinking about the baptism of Jesus and our own baptisms. Now, one, one of the things that is most amazing here is that God expresses his love and happiness with Jesus for others to see. I don't think we should ever take it lightly when God chooses to reveal himself through his own words directly to people. And so I think it's necessary to, to, think, to pause and think about that. And when he states his love for Jesus, that love for Jesus was there before Jesus decided to be baptized. Now, I know that this might seem like a difficult concept for us to grasp at times, but, G but God loves all his creation. And he loves, before we say this, I want you to stop for a second, and I want you to think about someone in your life that maybe you don't like all that much. Now, hopefully there's no one that pops to mind very quickly, but for most of us, there's probably someone. But I want you to know this. God loves that person that you may not like all that much. And he not only loves them, but he loves them just like he loves you. Just like any parent that has more than one child, you know at some point you're going to be asked this question. Which one of us do you love the most? And any good parent will tell you the answer is this. I love you all the same. And that is true of our Heavenly Father as well. He loves us all the same. Now, any parent of multiple children will also tell you this. Just like God, there are times when we are more pleased with one child than another. However, our love for them never changes. And his love for all his children never changes as well. And that's good news for us, right? 
even though we might find ourselves wondering how God can love that other person that we don't necessarily like all that much, it's good news that he does love them and that he loves us the same because sometimes we are that person that is not worthy of God's love. So the next time you come across that person that you don't necessarily care for all that much, try to remember that God loves them. And he wants that person to have a personal relationship with him just like you do. Perhaps we can begin to put our own personal thoughts aside during this Lenten season and work towards ministering to all God's children. Now that's the hard part to hear. The easy part to hear is about God's love is that he loves you the same way he loved Jesus. After all, if Jesus is our brother and Jesus is the Son of God, then we are God's children as well. So let us carry the confidence that is in God's love with us throughout this Lenten season. The second thing that I find very striking in the text is the idea of baptism and what it means for us as obedient people of God. Perhaps we can take some time during these 40 days to think back to our own baptism. If you were baptized when you were old enough to remember, do you remember the feeling that you had when you were, came out of the water? For me, I was old enough to remember. And I remember thinking how happy I was that I was doing something that I knew God was calling me to do. I remember thinking how I wanted to make sure I took the vows of my baptism seriously. And I remember the joy of the Holy Spirit coming into my life. Now you may be sitting there this morning and thinking, well, pastor, that is absolutely lovely for you, but I was baptized as a baby and I don't remember anything about it. Well, take heart because there are things that you can remember even if you can't remember the act of your baptism. You can still think of it this way. You were baptized by people that loved you and cared about you. They had you baptized because they were committing to raising you in the community of the church. And they were committing to making sure that Jesus Christ was a part of your life. You can think about this, and you can also think about all the people that were part of that community for you growing up. You can think about the Sunday school teachers you had, the youth leaders, the pastors, the people of the church who just took time to help you and to show you that you were loved. These are the things that you can always think about whenever you think about your baptism, regardless of when you were baptized. So let us take time this Lenten season to remember what our baptism means to us. The third thing that comes up as part of the scripture is that Jesus was out in the wilderness being tempted by Satan and being surrounded by wild beasts. And I think that is something that most of us can really relate to as well. At times, we can feel as though we're being led down the wrong path by Satan. Sometimes we're down that path halfway before we realize that we're down it. But we feel as though the temptations of this world are so difficult for us because they're constantly being shoved into our faces. And it feels as though we cannot escape from those temptations. Now, it feels that way because temptation is everywhere in this world. And they are constantly being shoved into our faces. And it feels that way because many temptations that are in this world are no longer avoided, but are fully embraced by people. So we find ourselves being surrounded by the wild beasts. And I don't mean the coyotes that howl out here some nights. We find ourselves being surrounded by the things in this world and by people advocating for things in this world like racism or sexism or exclusion of those that are different or those that hold power over others, or those that would enforce the yoke of poverty on their brothers and sisters just for their own gain. We see all these beasts around us, and we deal with the negative things that they bring into this world all the time. And it can really get you down if you allow it to. Now, you may even find yourself this day feeling as though you're walking alone in the wilderness. Perhaps the temptations of this world 
and the wild beasts have started to feel overwhelming for you. When I was a younger man, when I first started out in college, I found myself heading down a path into the wilderness where I was not only surrounded by the wild beasts, I was one of the wild beasts. And I allowed myself to move very far away from the vows of my baptism. Now, it would be disingenuous of me to say that I had lost my faith at the time, because I had not. However, the decisions that I was making at that time were not good ones. I wouldn't think that it would be safe to say that I was the prodigal son all the way, but to say that I was a halfway prodigal son at that time in my life, that's probably fair. However, I had great people in my life that helped me to see the path I was heading down was wrong. And they were there to set me back on a better path. So if you're struggling with these issues during this linen season, if you find yourself going in a direction that you shouldn't, take heart. We, the people of this church, love you and want to help you move out of that wrong path and back on to the path that Jesus wants for you. To move away from the wilderness and away from the beasts of this world. But even better than that, even better than the we love you, the Lord Jesus Christ loves you. And he wants to help you move back onto the correct path. The fourth thing that is striking to me about this part of scripture is that even when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, even though he's surrounded by wild beasts, he is also surrounded by angels. And what wonderful news for us as well. You see, just like Jesus, we have angels and the Holy Spirit to walk with us through the wilderness. We have them to help us remember our baptism and our commitment to God. You see, when we remember our baptism and our commitment to God, we put on his armor against all of these wild beasts and Satan. We become fully equipped to fight these evils in the world. And we have angels, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ to walk beside us. Let us remember how we are prepared to stand up against these wild beasts during the Lenten season. Finally, I think we need to think about what Jesus did when he came out of the wilderness. He began his public ministry. Brothers and sisters, what better time than this for us to begin our public ministry or for us to begin again our public ministry or for us to further our public ministry? Just as Jesus Christ took the message of salvation to all the people after his 40 days in the wilderness, let us use these 40 days of Lent to take his message to all that we meet as well. Amen. My challenge is for you this week. Remember your baptism. Remember those that have helped you walk with Christ. Remember that you are prepared to face the evils of this world. Think about how you can take your public ministry, that ministry of salvation through Jesus Christ, to all the people of this world. And if you haven't been baptized, if you haven't made a commitment to Jesus Christ, I would encourage you to do so today.